my name is Halsey. Welcome, welcome back to another international Sunday school lesson where we give an overview of the lessons based on the international uniform lessons from the Precepts for Living commentary. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, or to even leave a comment. So we're in our spring quarter, we're in unit two. And the theme for this quarter is God frees and redeems. All the lessons in April will be focusing on liberating gospel. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, April 17th, is from Matthew 28, verses 1 through verses 10. Lesson title is the Paschal Lamb lives. Before we start our lesson today, let's open up in prayer. Lord, we thank you. We thank you as always for this privilege. We take this a privilege when we can gather and when we can share your word of truth. We ask, Lord, that in the name of Jesus, that you would allow your word, Lord, to go forth in the ears and in the hearts of people those who are listening lord we thank you that you has given us your word to remind us of what you have done for us in this time that we're studying these lesson of your sacrifice thank you for these reminders to remind us lord not to forget never to forget what you has done for us we ask lord that you bless and that you strengthen every sunday school teachers Give them courage, Lord. Give them boldness. Give them understanding, Lord, as your word goes forth. We thank you for all of those who will listen and who will have a ears to hear and a heart to receive. Illuminate dark places and cause them, O oh God, to want and to have a desire to want to hear more and to not just be hearers, but to also be doers. We thank you in advance for what you will do in us, through us, and for us. Do it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this lesson today will be outlined and it will be divided into two sections. Section number one will be, will deals with women at the tomb. And that's Matthew 28 verses 1 through 8. Section number two will deals with Jesus appears to the women, and that's verses nine through verses ten. Okay, so in this lesson today, we will see Matthew's account of the risen Savior. So along the way leading up to our lesson today, Jesus was arrested, he was sentenced. He was crucified, he died, he, his body was hung on a cross between two thieves. And after his death, his body was wrapped in linen cloths and placed in a tomb with a large stone placed in front of the opening. On the third day, early one Sunday morning, which is where our lesson picks up today, the women came to the tomb and found an empty tomb. Sitting on the rolled away stone was an angel of the Lord who told them to not be afraid. Why? Because the Christ is risen. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Christ is risen. Jesus is risen. Why was it important for the tomb to be empty? Well, it would serve as a proof. It would be a witness of his resurrection. Why was it important for him to be resurrected? The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of our kingdom faith. Without the resurrection, the belief that we have in God of his grace and of his mercy through Christ would be null and void. According to... 1 Corinthians chapter 15 
and start at verse 12, talking about the resurrection and the importance of the resurrection. And verse 12, and it says, reading from the New Living Translation, it says, But tell me this, since we preach that Christ rose from the dead, why are some of you saying there will be no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ was not raised, then all our preaching is useless. And your trust in God is useless. And we apostles would all be lying about God. For we have said that God raised Christ from the grave. But that can't be true if there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still under condemnation for your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ have perished. And if we have hope in Christ only for this life, we are the most miserable people in the world. But in fact, is that Christ has been raised from the dead? He has become the first of a great harvest of those who will be raised to life again. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, Adam, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man, Christ. Everyone dies because all of us are related to Adam, the first man. But all of us who are related to Christ, the other man, will be given new life. But there is an order to this resurrection. Christ was raised first. Then when Christ come back, all his people will be raised. So the Apostle Paul here lets us know that the resurrection of Christ is the center of the gospel message because Christ rose from the dead as he promised. We know that what he said is true, that he is God. Because he rose, we have certainty that our sins are forgiven. Because he rose, he lives and represents us to God because he rose and defeated death we know we will also be raised amen hallelujah thank you Jesus the resurrection the risen Christ he is risen don't be afraid he is risen and this will lead us into our printed text. Section 1, it will deal with women at the tomb. And that's Matthew 28, verses 1 through verses 8. And it reads, Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would, would happen. Come, see where his body was laying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Then the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. 
And so in this setting, verse 1 lets us know that there were two women, two Marys, Mary Magdalene, in accordance to Luke chapter 8, it lets us know that she was a faithful follower of Christ. Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 1, and it says, Not long afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby cities and villages to announce the good news concerning the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women he had healed and from whom he had cast out evil spirits. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. So this Mary had been a faithful follower to Christ, as we can see here, even, even unto death. She followed him faithfully. In verse 2 lets us know that there were there was a sudden great earthquake that causes the guards that was guarding the tomb was guarding the opening of the tomb it causes them fear when they when the earthquake happened and, and they saw the angel roll away the stone it caused them to go into a fear that caused them to fell into a dead faint so the guards were frightened to faint but look look at the women they they were not deterred from the earthquake and they did not lose their focus they kept on pressing their way and that's the nature of our kingdom journey it gets real hard sometimes but god always he always sends us the assurance we need at the right time let's take a look at verse 5 and it says then the angel spoke to the women don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where, where, where his body was lying. Look at the, look at the present help that God provide, provided for these two women in time of trouble, in their time of distress. He's the same God we're serving today. The psalmist in Psalms 46 and verse 1 lets us know that God is our refuge and strength. And he is always ready to help us in time of trouble. These two women was troubled. They were very troubled, but God provided them with courage and he provided them with strength. God is always, always ready to help to provide refuge, to provide security, to provide peace. God's power is, is complete and is ultimate. His power is complete and is ultimate victory in every situations and every circumstances that we will face. He will not fail to rescue those who love him. These women love Jesus. They've been following him during his ministry and they were there, needed help, and he provided help for them. He's the same one that we are serving today, our present help in time of trouble. Amen. So verse 8, again, lets us know that even though the women were frightened, they were also filled with joy. They rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. They were filled with joy even in the midst of chaos. Why? They were reassured of the risen Savior. They were reassured of the risen Savior. And that is the effect of the good news, bringing hope to a dark and dying world. The risen Savior, bringing hope to a dark and dying world risen savior and here we can see jesus did as he had said in matthew chapter 16 we go back to chapter 16 and we look at verse 21 and he said to them verse 21 16 and 21 from then on jesus began to tell his disciples 
plainly that he had to go to Jerusalem and he told them what would happen to him there. He would suffer at the hands of the leaders of the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed and he would be raised on the third day. He did what he said. He overcame death and the grave. Again, what are we telling this dark and dying world in front of us? What are we saying to them about this risen Savior? Are we telling this dark and dying world that Jesus Christ is waiting patiently for them to surrender their life to him? Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We're going to take a look at Revelation chapter 3. And we're going to start looking at verses 20. And it says, Look, here I stand at the door and knock. If you hear me calling and open the door, I will come in. And we will share a meal as friends. I will invite everyone who is victorious to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Anyone who is willing to hear should listen to the Spirit and understand what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Jesus is knocking at the world. There's a dark world that is out there and Jesus is knocking at their hearts because he wants none to be perished, none to be lost. Are we telling them that Jesus is alive and well? And he's knocking at their hearts. He's patient and he's persistent, but he's not going to knock forever. Are we telling them to come and to answer before it's too late? Because tomorrow is promised to no one. Amen. It is our job and it is our responsibility to spread, to share this good news right here. That the risen Christ is knocking on the hearts of unbelievers for those who is lost in this dark and dying world it is our responsibility to let them know that jesus is knocking at the door knocking on their hearts and for them to answer him because again tomorrow is not promised to anyone amen we'll now look at section two and it deals with jesus appears to the women and that's verses nine through verses ten nine and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. So here as we can see, as the women obeyed the angel's instructions, Jesus appears and greets them. And what did they do? They, they fell down at his feet and they worship him. Worshiping the risen Savior who was bruised for our iniquity, who was wounded for our transgression. The chastisement of our peace was up on him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We're at peace because of what Jesus did for us, taking our place. He is our risen Savior, and he deserves not only our praise, but our worship. Are you worshiping him on today? Who are you telling today? Who am I telling today that he is risen and he deserves praise and worship? Amen. So, as we conclude this lesson, let's take a look at a few questions how has fear stopped you or myself from sharing the good news the gospel to others question number two what can we do to overcome fear question number three how can we be more bolder when sharing the good news also what are some lessons we can take away lesson number one understand understand that 
without the resurrection, our faith in Christ would be in vain. Be determined to serve even if we are afraid. Boldness. Pray for boldness to share the good news when people may have doubt and questions the omnipotent power of God. Pray that God will give us boldness to share the good news. Be thankful. Be thankful that Jesus is true to his word. He said, I will die, but in three days I will rise. He is the risen Savior. Number five, worship. Worship Jesus. Why? Because he is our risen Savior. And that concludes our lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a like, a share, subscribe, or even leave a comment. But most of all, remember we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time, bye-bye.